Welcome to Ghost Stories for a Spooky Halloween! Oh. This is a collaboration of many, many channels. I will tell you the many channels after I tell you my spooky ghost story. Are we ready? Are we? All right. <clears throat> Once upon a time, this is actually a story that was told to me by an ex-boyfriend. And he said that this really happened to him. His family bought a very large, very old house in a very small town in Delaware. Delaware. <clears throat> anyway, this house was from the 1820s. It had been around since the days of slavery. It was a six bedroom house. My ex-boyfriend was the oldest of three children. He had a younger brother and a younger sister. And being the oldest, when they moved into this house, he was already a teenager and he got to choose his bedroom. So he decided that he would like to choose I'm going to take this off a little bit so I can see you. He wanted to be on the third floor so that he would have a private space to himself. There were two bedrooms on the third floor and the family used one as storage and the other one was finished and it clearly had been at one point in time the house slave's bedroom and then after that the servant's bedroom. There was a teeny little narrow staircase that went from the second floor to the third floor, as opposed to the big grand staircase that went from the first floor to the second floor. And when you walked up to the third floor, you actually had to duck to get through. It was sort of a weird situation, like the staircase, or the, the doorway was about five feet tall. So he chose this beautiful bedroom on the third floor, and he was up there all on his own. And at first, everything was fine. And he liked his privacy, he liked his space, he liked being up there. And then there started being a few nights where he would hear weird noises. So he heard things like the other bedroom door open, close. He heard footsteps in the hallway. He asked his sister and brother the next day, what were you doing on the third floor? What, you shouldn't be up there in the middle of the night. We didn't go up there. What are you talking about? We never go up there. I swear I heard footsteps. So over time, things got a little stranger and a little stranger. He would hear footsteps. Every so often he heard what he thought was a woman whistling. And um, he had a fireplace, a very small fireplace, but he had a fireplace in his bedroom because almost every single bedroom in this house had fireplaces because that was the heating when the house was built. So he started at 5 a.m. He would hear something scratching in the fireplace. And at first he thought maybe there were mice. He told his parents about it. They had somebody come and look for rodents. Really quick. Speaking of creatures, our four-leggeds are making noise. There were no rodents in the house, believe it or not, in such an old house. And so he didn't know what it was, and in his fireplace, which nobody used anymore, there were some old logs, and one day he noticed that they had moved positions from one night to the other, um, and he had heard that noise early in the morning, and so he decided to take the logs out of the fireplace. He cleared the fireplace, made it empty, put the old logs next to the fireplace, and then that night at 5 a.m. he heard something scratching, scratching, and he woke up in the morning and there were logs in the fireplace again and at this point he started getting a little creeped out he started feeling like the house was haunted now he'd never seen a ghost nothing like that and he wasn't sure he believed in them but um, it was just a little too weird and then there were uh, as he was getting older i think he was 18 or 19 when this happened he went out with friends this was back when the drinking age was 18 he came home one night at like 1 a.m. and he was a little drunk 
and he climbed up his stairs and as he's climbing the stairs and he ducks his head and he said he lifted his head up and just at that moment he saw an image of a woman like kind of silvery shiny woman floating from his bedroom to the other bedroom and he said she had no legs and she was dressed like a servant from the 1800s like with one of those ruffly bonnets and a shawl um, and it was just her upper body and he saw her like float past and he saw the door open and close. Now she didn't see him but he was completely freaked out. He went into his room and he thought I had one beer too many and he went to bed and in the morning he was like it was all in my head I was just a little drunk blah 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 so that happened and then a couple weeks later it was finals and he was studying late and he was studying in the living room and he went upstairs again between 1 and 2 a.m. and he goes upstairs and as he's getting to the top of the stairwell just he caught the very tail end of her the very image of her walking into that second bedroom and closing the door and he went and he looked in the second bedroom and he opened the turned on the lights and he looked around and it was nothing but his family stuff in storage and at this point he was getting really creeped out so just a few nights after that again he's taking finals for college and he said his mom had done his laundry but he you know he needed to fold it he brought all his laundry upstairs and he just dumped it on his bed in the afternoon and he went back downstairs and he was up studying 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 he went back up to his room and he paused when he got to the top of the stairs because he was already a little creeped out nothing didn't see anyone fine he walks into his room and there next to his bed he sees the woman again just from the waist up he could see her front face and she's folding his laundry and she's see-through right at that point he watches her for a minute and then he goes <gasps> he made some kind of noise he said he didn't scream but it was like a gasp and she looks up and she looks him in the face and she dissipates and disappears and he is like <gasps> and it turns on the light and he looks and there are his clothes two-thirds of them folded He went downstairs, he said he spent that night on the sofa in the living room, and the next day he asked every member of his family if anybody had been folding his clothes. Nobody had been folding his clothes. That day, he moved his bedroom down to the second floor. He said, I don't, I guess she was the ghost of a servant or a slave, and she was helping me, she was trying to set my fire in the morning. I don't know that she was out to get me, but you know what? I'm not sleeping in what might have been her bedroom. Ah. And so he moved downstairs. And after that, the whole family would hear noises on the third floor. But he never went up to the third floor ever again in the middle of the night. So that is my story. That is his story. As I remember it, I am retelling it some 30 years later. Make of it what you will and have a spooky and safe Halloween. Now if you liked this story there are several things you should do because again this was a collaboration organized by Christie's Corners and it is many channels so I'm going to read to you the channels. Christie's Corner <clears throat> absolutely fabulous absolutely fabulous and all of these will be linked below in, in the um, comment section. Accidentally Zen, Accidental Zen, <clears throat> Death Star Diva, Lady Janeers, Life with Roxana, Magic Kingdom Princess, Yours Truly a Singer Family Adventures, you know that one, <clears throat> The Kilt Guy, and The Disney Damsels, Hopefully they are not in too much distress at the moment. And Twinkle Bell Taryn. 
Now those are all the channels that are also posting spooky ghost stories this evening. So go enjoy them. Spend your Halloween tomorrow listening to these marvelous stories. Thank you, Christy, for organizing this. This is fabulous. If you've enjoyed this, if you enjoy Disney content and just interesting spooky content and kittens in general, please subscribe. Please give us a like. Think about commenting. What did you make of this ghost story? below and if you hit that bell notification you'll know exactly when we're posting videos because we do it two three times a week not on a super regular schedule so spread a little kindness in the world spread a little candy in the world for halloween and see you real soon thank you wait i want to tell something i want to tell everybody something oh, come on come on in um this is Rafi, he has something to tell you. I want to tell a scary story that's in our next video. But it's a lot scarier than yours, because I've seen it so many times that it's not scary. Do you want to try telling it now? I guess. Um, Biscuit, can you stop making noise, please? Um, so... Oh, uh, is you if any kids are watching this, I'm like a giant fan of trains. I don't know why I've been like this since I was like one, one, one to ten, because I'm ten years old now. But this is the story I that someone had made and I was, That's our cat knocking things down. And um a story that one of my friends had made. It's called The Untold Story of Timothy. The Untold Story of Timothy? Mm. Okay, go ahead. It's going to be kind of short. Um, so basically, this engine named Timothy, he was, a basic, he was a white engine with the number zero on his side. He looks a lot like Thomas, but um, painted white, and it had like, this, like, wrinkles all over his face. That's Thomas the Tank Engine. Go on. Oh, well, it's not. That's his I mean, brother. I mean, he looks like Thomas the Tank Engine. He yeah. does, but... Tennessee is also Thomas's brother, so. Okay. And, um, he leaves the station after the guard blows its whistle, and then he just puffs along like a normal steam engine would do. What he didn't know is that, well, the viaduct, you guys don't, if you guys don't know what a viaduct is, I'm, I actually have no idea either. But anyway, <laughs> but, um, he was coming up to a viaduct, and he didn't know that it was, that it was under repair, and um it's like a it's like a gate that opens yeah. and closes yeah oh. but it's like track it's like a bridge right right it's it's somewhere where there's water and it's yeah on a canal yeah and then all of a sudden timothy starts to go a lot faster and he reaches about um 120 miles per hour his driver keeps on saying timothy timothy slow down and you're going to crash all of a sudden his eyes start his eyes turn red Blood comes out of them, his his nose is bleeding, and then blood also comes out of his mouth, and he says, um, I will send you all to the scrapyard. <gasps> and, then, the scrapyard. and then after that, he he falls off the wire duct and dies. And, um... That is not a happy Thomas the Train story. It's, it's not in the series, because... It's not? Did you see not. that on YouTube or something? Yeah. Yeah? Well, yeah, but, and but somebody somebody made it on their own channel. Yeah. That's pretty cool.